Okay, uh, so in this tutorial, I'm going to cover uh, basically how to model a small uh, kind of sample screen wall uh, using the geometry you've already created for 3D printing um, and um, uh, how to perform a couple different types of analysis uh, in Ladybug. Uh, so I'm going to start by actually um, taking the geometry and I'm going to take this box that I've made to kind of define the form or the limits and I'm going to group it. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways you can kind of configure this uh, module. Um, so we can work, uh, you know, kind of by making copies and keeping it at the same orientation. Um, but you can also uh, mirror it and rotate it. So for example, if I rotate it, choose the option to copy and then rotate it 180. I can even rotate 3D. Again, make sure you copy it. Um, and we can find all kinds of different ways to uh, kind of arrange it. Um, you can also mirror it. Three point. There we go. So basically, uh, just you want to kind of uh, play around with the uh, um, uh, organization of the geometry. Oops, I missed that one. Um, and kind of build yourself a screen wall. Uh, let's say roughly nine by nine units. Or I'm sorry, three by three units, nine units total. So I'm actually also going to uh, go ahead and uh, rotate it on its side so that we're kind of looking through the face. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So just kind of arrange it. Uh, however you like. And you can do it, you know, as many units deep as you want. Okay, so some configuration doesn't matter too much what it is, uh, but you want it to be, um, you know, nine by nine at least, or I'm sorry, three by three, nine total at least. Okay, so once you've kind of developed a, a screen um, organization uh, in, uh, that you want to try and test, um, the next step would be to go ahead and open up Grasshopper. And we're going to use a plugin called Ladybug for this one. So to download Ladybug, you go to food for rhino.com. Uh, you'll have to log in or make yourself an account. Search for ladybug and go to ladybug tools and once you've logged in you can go down here under downloads so scroll down to where it says downloads and you want to download this version 0 0.0067. Go ahead and download that. Okay and uh, in order to install it, uh, let me just delete that one. First, you want to go to where you uh, downloaded the file, right click on it, go to properties, and under properties, you'll find this option to unblock. And it's important you do that to the whole zip file so that it affects everything that's inside of the file. So make sure you check unblock and then click OK. Um, and then if we go inside of this uh, file, we want to go to the um, folder called Ladybug. And basically all we got to do is um, copy. And by, by that I mean drag all of the .gh user files into the canvas in Grasshopper. And it'll take a few seconds to kind of load everything. Um, and I should also point out while we're waiting, uh, some of you may not be able to just uh, load it directly from the zip file. But you can also just right click on it and hit uh, extract all or extract here, whatever kind of shows up on your computer. 
and um, you extract it, it looks like I already have a copy. It'll show up as a folder in the same uh, uh, location as the download. Okay, so now it should be loaded into Ladybug. Let me expand my window, there we go. You should find that there's a new uh, tab up at the top labeled uh, Ladybug. And um, what we're gonna do uh, with this is perform a couple different types of kind of daylighting analysis. Uh, the first one we're gonna do is called sunlight hours analysis. Uh, but before I do anything else, I actually want to go to this first tab in the ladybug and click on uh, the one that's just called ladybug. And uh, you can get a panel if you want, it's under parameters. And basically you just want to like uh, make sure that ladybug is working fine. So this panel will just let you know uh, that everything is working. Then you would go back and uh, we're going to go to the tab environmental analysis. And we're looking right now at the one called uh, sunlight hours analysis. Um, now I think it's best, uh, or I find it easiest to kind of work backwards uh, with Ladybug uh, from the type of analysis that you're trying to do, uh, or you know, like whichever one of these components you're using, uh, just so I can kind of remind myself of uh, all the inputs and all the information that I need uh, to make it work. Um, so I'll just kind of go one by one, like on the left hand side, these are your inputs. Um, and I'm going to explain uh, the ones that we're going to use for our, our uh, lesson here. And I will uh, show you how to set this thing up. So first of all, it's going to ask for a north. Uh, again, with a grasshopper, you can tell what um, type of information an input or an output needs by looking at uh, the little icon. And in this case, they're all mm, vectors or numbers. So we actually can't tell very much information from this. But what the north is looking for is a direction, uh, which means a vector. In our case, um, the default direction is along the y-axis, basically the same as when you uh, create a sun or, or set up your sun. Uh, in Rhino, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave that one as default. I don't need to enter anything there. The next thing I want to do is I want to set up a geometry that I'm going to analyze. Now, in this case, we're actually looking at um, how this thing performs as a kind of screen. So we're, what we really want to uh, test is a kind of ground plane. So if I go back into Rhino, I'm going to make a new layer, call this my ground plane. And I'm just going to use the command plane. And I'll choose the option center, kind of get it close uh, to my screen wall. And just make a kind of fairly big plane like that. It doesn't have to be huge. Um, and that's what we're going to use as our kind of test surface. So we're analyzing uh, basically how much light is hitting this surface. We're going to analyze that uh, as it's filtered through this object. If I go back to Grasshopper, what I need to do is input that geometry into Grasshopper. And the way you do that is you go to Parameters, under Geometry, and this is kind of most every type of geometry that you could, um, uh, that you can have in either Rhino or in Grasshopper. Um, and we're going to choose the one called Surface. So when we want to input a piece of geometry from Rhino, or reference a piece of geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper, we need to get one of these geometry uh, components. So under surface, you can see right now nothing's loaded in it, which is why it's yellow. I'm just going to select it, right click, and go to set one surface. Okay, so there's our uh, there's our actual uh, ground plane. In other words, our geometry. So I can go ahead and plug that in right now. Okay, and I'm actually also going to turn off that layer, just to kind of. In fact, I'll make another layer for now, just to keep as current. I'm also going to turn off my wireframe. Uh, because the next thing that I want to set up is my context. So under uh, context, I actually want to input uh, my screen wall. Now, in order to input this geometry into Grasshopper, 
because they're not single surfaces, they're actually poly surfaces, right? They're, they're joined uh, out of multiple surfaces. So for that, I need a different kind of geometry component. So if I go to geometry, there's one called BREP. And BREP stands for boundary representation, which is just grasshopper's way of saying poly surface. So if it's a surface that's joined out of multiple surfaces, uh, you want to use a BREP. So once again, now I would go into Grasshopper, or I'm sorry, into Rhino, select all those surfaces. And then with my BREP, I'll right click, and this time I'll hit set multiple instead of set one, because I have multiple surfaces. Okay, and then we should find that uh, that geometry is referenced in our BREP. We go ahead and turn that layer off as well. Okay, now we have uh, what, what, uh, ladybug calls the context, so I'll go ahead and plug the beer up into that. And the next thing that we need to uh, tell ladybug is the grid size. So basically, this is going to um, uh, affect like the resolution of the result that we get on our ground plane when we do a, a, a lighting analysis. Uh, and uh, what it means is actually the size of each grid cell when it subdivides the surface into like quads or into individual like cells. So what I need to do is give this uh, input a number. Uh, so in Grasshopper, the best way to give numbers usually is to create what's called a number slider. And under number slider, uh, if we place that on the canvas, you can see by default it, it outputs a number between zero and one. Uh, and it'll kind of change depending on where we set the slider. Now, really good uh, kind of shortcut in Grasshopper is that when you double click on the canvas, you can actually search for uh, any component you want. So you don't have to go through the menus and kind of find the right ones. For example, I could find the one that we just used to input our ground plane. Um, or if I want a slider with a specific number. So in this case, I'm going to go for like 5.0. Instead of uh, searching for a number slider, I can actually just type in the exact number I want, and Grasshopper will automatically make a slider with that value. I'll go ahead and plug that into grid size. Okay, and uh, under distance from base, which is the next input, uh, we actually just need to set a small offset uh, above the ground plane, uh, which is basically the location where uh, ladybug that ladybug uses to analyze. I won't explain why, but I'm just going to again use a number slider this time 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Press enter. And we'll set that in for our distance from base. Uh, now the next step here uh, is to you is to create uh, we're going to skip orientation. I don't, uh, we don't need to worry about that. We're going to use the input sun vectors. So if we go back to the ladybug tab, and let's see, I believe we want this component uh, under visualize weather data, sun path, ladybug sun path. Okay. So I'm going to grab that component, place it on the canvas. Um, and you can see right here, it's giving us an output called sun vectors. And that's exactly what we're going to plug in there. But at the moment, if we hover over the output, you can see it says null in that little text box, which means there's no data in that list. So we need to give this component more information in order for it to work. So first of all, um, let's go again. We don't have to mess with the north. We need a location. And it, if we hover over that input, It'll tell us the output of the import EPW or construct location component, uh, which means, and I believe this is actually under ladybug, open EPW weather file. Yep, that's the right one. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we're actually going to go to a website called energyplus.net. And this is a, you know, um, a free resource, uh, Department of Energy, US Department of Energy. 
that kind of catalogs weather data for all different locations uh, throughout the country. And I think if we go over to where it says weather, the tab weather, so it actually does uh, other parts of the world as well. We'll go to North and Central America, USA, Arizona, and then down to Tucson, we can choose whichever. Okay, and download one of those files. Or I'm sorry, click on one of those, and then, and then you'll want to choose the one EPW. And it should autom automatically download a file when you click on that. Okay, and that's the file that we need to load into um, uh, Grasshopper. Now if I go under, uh, back in Grasshopper, I go under Parameters again. This time, instead of Geometry, we're going to choose Primitive. And under Primitive, we're going to choose a file path. So that works in exactly the same way as, as these uh, geometry references does. It just allows Grasshopper to reference a file that's saved somewhere in our computer. So with this, I'm going to right click again and go to set one existing file. And I've actually already got it saved in a specific folder, but just go to whatever folder it's saved in. And it should be called .epw and click open. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and take that and plug it right into uh, the open on our open weather file component. Okay, and the next thing I want is uh, again under ladybug, under ladybug. We want this component import location. Um, so uh, now that we have our EPW file, oops. Oh, maybe I don't need this uh, component. I'm sorry, so you don't need that first component. You just need this one import location, the ladybug import location. And then we can uh, plug our EPW file directly into that. And you can see the output is uh, some information, but it's called location, and that's what we want to plug into our sun path. Okay. And uh, moving down from there, I'm going to uh, set up a couple of different um, uh, inputs down here for hour, day, and month. Um, so we can just go ahead and directly tell this component like what uh, day we want to analyze, what time of year we want to analyze, and uh, um, we're just going to use uh, number sliders for that. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and just type in 12. I'm going to just double click on the canvas, type in 12, which would be noon. I'll plug that into hour. Then I'm going to uh, give a day. So I'm going to double click on the canvas again and type in 21. 21st. And for the month, double click. And again, I'm going to type in 12 for December. This would be December 21st at noon. OK. And now if we go back to the right-hand side and we look at our sun vectors output, you can see there's a, a vector in there, or there's a kind of list of numbers uh, in that output. It means that uh, this component is now working, which means we can use it. So we'll all just drag from the sun vectors output uh, to run an analysis using our sunlight hours analysis. Uh, now, over here, before we can actually get our analysis to work, there's a couple of other quick things we need to do. Uh, and if we go over to parameters, under input, there's a component called Boolean toggle. Go ahead and grab that, place it on the canvas. That's really simple. It just allows us to toggle between a true and a false output. And uh, if we look at our, um, our parallel input, it's actually, and read the description, it's actually asking us for uh, a true or false value. Um, now, in, the, in this case, the parallel input is just going to basically uh, tell your computer to use all of its CPU or only part of it. So it kind of depends on whether you're like, you know, trying to run some other stuff at the same time. For me right now, I'm going to set it to true. So if I toggle my Boolean to true, and just drag it into parallel. And then I want to make a copy of this. I'm going to 
Just select it and hit Control C, Control V. You can also copy stuff by dragging it and tapping Alt, just like in uh, in Rhino. And this one, I'm going to plug into Run It. And again, if we so if we hover over the input of Run It, it's telling us set it to true when you want it to actually perform the analysis. So I'm going to plug in True, and then before too long, we should get an output. Um, so now uh, you can see uh, it's performing, uh, or it's giving us some kind of result uh, coming out of the right-hand side. And if I go over to my, let's see, if I go over to the outputs of my Sunlight Hours Analysis, there's an output called Analysis Mesh. And for this, I'm going to get a geometry uh, under parameters geometry and get a mesh component and plug that into mesh. Uh, and now what I can do is I can unpreview everything else. So in Grasshopper, there's like a um, every component is either previewed on or off. Uh, so if I select this um, component and uh, right click on it, I can click this button preview. And now that uh, you know, reference to that geometry has disappeared in my viewport. So that information is still stored in that component. We're just not looking at it. And this is because um, uh, it can actually, you know, every time we plug information into a new component, it's going to preview it again. So we want to just make sure we're looking at the ones specific to where we need, we need our results. I'm going to go ahead and unpreview my surface as well. You can also do it by selecting them, right-clicking on the canvas and going to preview off. And then I could hit preview off on my um, uh, sunlight hours analysis. Now it looks like, uh, actually we need the sunlight hours mesh output to give us the actual color. Uh, but it looks like we're basically only getting one uh, color out of our analysis, which means it's not working properly yet. Um, so I'm going to go over to the component or to the tab mesh at the top, go to analysis and mesh edges. So like I said before, we're subdividing the surface into smaller into a grid, um, and so each grid is going to give us like one value or, or one kind of uh, um, output. Uh, and so if I plug my mesh into this component mesh edges it'll actually show me like what that subdivision is giving me. So uh, right now you can see that the, the mesh is pretty large. Um, so the subdivisions are pretty large. And what I could do is go over here where it says grid size and I could make this a smaller number. And now we're getting a little bit of information but still not very much. You make it smaller again. And try one more time. So you can see it'll only set each like kind of grid cell to a specific value. Let me just double click and set it to like point one. And let me just remind you, the smaller you make this number, the longer it'll take to perform the analysis. Oh, I see. <laughs> so now I would want to go over to my mesh edges and turn the preview off. Uh, but you can see that uh, because my grid size now is very small, uh, it's giving us pretty close to like what a shadow of our uh, geometry would look like uh, at a specific time of day, which would be in this case, you know, uh, noon on December 21st. Um, now, that is a, a great example of how to um, perform like a solar analysis for a specific uh, time. But that's nothing you can't do, uh, sort of, um, uh, just by like turning the sun on in Rhino. Uh, apart from the fact that we can get real data out of this, we also want to be able to look at a whole um, kind of spectrum of time. Um, so what I could also do over here in my sun path, I'm I'm going to uh, instead of just giving one hour uh, for time of day. I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, a whole series of numbers, or a whole series of hours. 
uh, and see if we can do an analysis for kind of like a whole bunch of different times. If I go to, uh, so what I need to do is basically make a list of numbers between, let's say, like 9 in the morning and uh, uh, 6 at night or something. If I go over to sets, and under sets, choose sequence, and then choose series. So again, that's this one right here, series. And from here, I have three inputs, and series is exactly what it sounds. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, allow us to create a series of numbers. If we, hover, if we hover over the output, you can see by default it's creating a series between uh, 0 and 9. So basically this component needs three inputs. First one is the start. So what's the first number that we want our list to have? Once again, if I start it, if I make a slider that says 9, that means 9 in the morning would be the first um, time that would come out of our list. Now the next thing we want is the step size, which means that as our list counts up, you can see from our output it's going 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we want it to count up uh, by one hour each time. So we'll leave that one alone because it's already set to one. And then we would go to uh, the number of values in the series for the last input. And for this, we're going to go from 9 in the morning till about 6 at night, which means we want to count up uh, 9 times, I think. So once again, I'll make a slider. OK. And you can also, by the way, uh, anytime you're like going to change an input to this and you're afraid it'll take really long, uh, you can go over here and toggle this to false. And so as long as the analysis isn't running, all the changes you make aren't going to slow your computer down. If I go ahead and uh, replace this input, you can see I can still navigate. Everything's fine. I can go ahead and save my file now if I wanted to. Um, and I wouldn't uh, I need to worry about this crashing. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and toggle it back to true. So we can see the result of our new input. Okay, and now you can see uh, Ladybug's doing a really cool thing, which is it's telling us, um, it's giving us a whole bunch of kind of uh, shadows from different times of a single day. Um, and it's telling us kind of which areas of the surface are getting the most radiation throughout the day by, by calculating the overlap between those uh, kind of light and dark spaces. Um, so. Uh, once again, I can I can input any any number of series of values here, in hour, day, and month. Um, I can analyze uh, the performance of this wall for the whole year. Again, I don't recommend doing that uh, unless you're going to turn your grid size way up. Um, but uh, just so you know, you can set it to whatever day, time, and uh, set of hours you want. Um, and the last thing I want to show you with this analysis is there's this input up here called legend uh, parameters. If I go back to Ladybug and go under uh, uh, extra maybe? Oh yeah, extra. Uh, and get this component Ladybug legend parameters. Uh, what this will allow us to do, again, I'm actually going to toggle this off, the run it. I'm going to toggle that to false right now because I don't want uh, to have to wait each time I change an input here. Uh, but what this, will, what this output will allow us to do is, um, if I plug it into legend parameters, uh, is it'll allow us to set a particular color scheme to our output, um, which in this case, I just want to kind of set it to grayscale. Um, now, I could, all I really need to do here is input something for custom colors right here. Um, and again, there's a ladybug component for that. If I go to extra, go to gradient library. So the one right next to it. OK. And under the output from gradient library, custom colors, I'll plug that right in. And you can see right now our component just turned yellow. And in Grasshopper, that means that something is not working. So if I hover over the little balloon in the top right, it should tell us 
you should connect at least two colors to custom colors. And right now, this thing needs uh, some more information to give us a real output. Again, if we hover over the output, it says null. Um, okay, and then if we hover over the input, you can see there's this list of uh, different inputs we have. So it's telling us basically if we uh, input a number slider for like zero, that means it will give us the original ladybug colors. If we input like three or four, uh, it will give us view analysis. If we input uh, five, it gives us sunlight hours, that kind of thing. So I'm actually going to use the one uh, called sunlight hours. Again, I'll just double click on the canvas, and type five to make a number slider. And I'll plug that in. Now you can see our legend parameters is much happier. And I'll toggle my run it to true. Wait a few seconds. Okay. And then in the viewport, it should pop up um, as a new uh, kind of color scheme. Um, and this, uh, again, is uh, number five, which means it's just grayscale. It's kind of like an overlapping sequence of like shadows. Um, and finally, uh, with this analysis, if you wanted to um, uh, basically bring this into Rhino, what you would do is you would take the output from Sunlight Hours Mesh. So again, I'm, I'm plugging that into a mesh right now so I can kind of isolate it. And in order to bring something back into Rhino from Grasshopper, you need to do something called bake it. If I select that component, right click on it, go down here to where it says bake, it will ask me what layer I want to bake it to. Click OK. And then you can see in our uh, Rhino window, we actually have a mesh now. And if I go under display and turn off uh, mesh wires, you can see that the mesh itself actually has the colors of, of those individual cells like baked into it. Um, so you could use this to kind of export uh, information to another um, uh, uh, software or, you know, like export it for your drawings, uh, for your um, diagrams and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the first setup. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to go back into Grasshopper. I can actually hide this for right now. Uh, and I'm going to, um, first of all, unpreview this mesh output. So right, or let's start left click on it. Then right click on the canvas and hit preview off. And I'm also going to toggle my run it to false uh, because I want to set up a different type of analysis now. And again, I don't want this making any uh, problems or slowing me down. Uh, now I would go back up to environmental analysis. And this time I'm going to do the first one, which is called ladybug radiation analysis. So for this one, we're actually going to analyze the, um, the surface of the geometry itself, uh, kind of depending on how much, uh, and kind of try to figure out like how uh, this geometry deals with like exposure to radiation based on its shape. Um, so once again, I'll just go through these inputs one by one, the ones that we use. Uh, and the first one is geometry. Now, in, because we're analyzing the screen wall itself and not the kind of result of the space around it, we want to input uh, uh, this geometry uh, into uh, our radiation analysis. So uh, again, when Ladybug does any kind of analysis, it's going to translate your geometry into a mesh. In this particular case, we want to kind of have control over like the resolution of that mesh because our geometry is a little bit weird. It's not just a plane. Um, so before we go ahead and input it in Grasshopper, uh, we're going to actually turn it into a mesh. So I'll just go back into Rhino real quick. I'm going to make a new component or a new layer called Mesh. I'll turn on my surface, select the surfaces, and mesh them. Now uh, I want to be really clear here. There, you can turn it all the way up, uh, and when you do that, if you turn on mesh wires, you'll see that each quad is going to be really, really tiny. This is a bad idea, right? So you want to make sure that the quads are relatively, uh, relatively large, because uh, Ladybug is actually going to analyze, um, uh, you know, like how much radiation is, is hitting 
each individual little quad, right? So that's a ton of calculation for Ladybug to do. So I want to actually go ahead and delete that uh, mesh. I just type in SEL mesh, delete it. Unhide my VRAP or my poly surface. And I'm going to mesh it. So this time, I want to kind of bring the number of subdivisions down. I can just do this by moving the slider. And I think you want to be kind of at the third or fourth one right here, somewhere in there. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. OK. And now if we zoom in, we can see that that's like a much, much uh, larger, like individual subdivisions on the surface. It's going to be a lot like faster for Ladybug to calculate. Now I'm going to type in SEL last or select last to select the mesh. Right click and move it to the new layer I made, mesh. Uh, and then I'll turn off the surfaces. Go back to Grasshopper. This time I'm going to go ahead and input a mesh. So I'll go into Parameters, Geometry, and choose the component Mesh. Under Mesh, I can right-click, go to Set Multiple, select all my meshes, and press Enter. Okay, now I can actually unpreview my... Or I'm sorry, I turn off the layer in Rhino. I'm also going to turn off that BRAP player. Okay, and that's our geometry, so I can plug that right into my radiation analysis. In this case, there's we're not going to do uh, any context. Um, uh, we're just going to ignore that one for right now. Uh, the next thing we need to determine is the grid size. So once again, uh, in this case, because our mesh is already subdivided, I actually just want to set this to kind of a big number to keep it from re-subdividing uh, my mesh to anything smaller. So once again, I can double click on the canvas and type in 5.0. I can plug that into grid size. Uh, and basically that's just to keep, kind of, uh, keep it from doing anything. Distance from base, I would use the same number as I did on my last analysis. And then we're gonna get down to this thing called selected sky matrix. Um, that's a ladybug component, so we'll go back over there. And I believe under uh, Visualize Weather Data, there's a thing called Flex Sky Matrix. Exactly what we need. Okay, and this thing is our input. But you can see right now, again, uh, if something is yellow or orange in Grasshopper, that usually means that it's not working properly. In this case, there's no data in this list. That's what a yellow or orange wire means. Um, so this component still needs some more information. Uh, first thing I need is uh, what's called the cumulative sky matrix. I believe that's also under uh, visualize weather data, ladybug gen cumulative sky matrix. Okay, I'll place that on the canvas. Again, I can plug it right into my select sky matrix. And under uh, EPW file, if you remember, that's the same thing we set in this path over here on the left. I can just plug that guy right into here. Uh, and I'm also, I'm going to ignore the rest of this for now. Basically what this does is it uh, um, uh, kind of generates some data based on our weather uh, from uh, EPW file uh, about like what the sky, what kind of uh, radiation is coming from the sky. Um, and once again, we can leave the rest of the inputs alone, except for this one, run it. You can see by default it's set to false. So I need to set it to true. So I'm going to go down here and copy a toggle, a Boolean toggle. Plug that in to run it. You might see the command prompt pop up. You might have to wait a few seconds. Okay, uh, and then that should be um, giving us an output, which is great. Uh, the next thing we need to do is give this guy some more information. Um, so under uh, the inputs here, we're also going to uh, find what's called an analysis period in Ladybug. Uh, I think...
So under uh, Analyze Weather Data, ta um, second from the left, uh, there's a component called Analysis Period. Okay. Um, and you can see this is pretty simple. It's asking us uh, to define a range of time. It's asking us from what month to what month, from what day to what day, and hour to what hour. And once again, we can just use number sliders to define uh, what the inputs are for the analysis period. I'm going to choose the first day of the first and the first hour of January. Oops, I plugged these in all wrong. So January uh, 1st. Uh, oh, by the way, when you plug stuff in wrong in Grasshopper, uh, you can either replace the input by dragging a new slider over it or a new output over it. You can see how that one, how that wire replaced that uh, uh, other wire. Um, or you can unplug stuff by holding Control on the keyboard. And you can see my mouse uh, cursor has a little red arrow with a minus sign. So that allows me to unplug specific. Uh, outputs and stuff like that. So in this case, I'm just going to plug in these three from month, day, hour to December uh, 31st. Hour 24, so the end of the day. So that's basically one full year. Now I can go ahead and plug this analysis period into my select sky matrix. Okay, and we can go ahead and leave all the other inputs as default. All right, and then if we go back to our radiation analysis, uh, the things that are, we have left to do are to define uh, those two inputs again, uh, which are like parallel and run it. I can go ahead and copy my Boolean toggles. Plug in the parallel one, plug in the run it one, toggle it to true. And this one might take a while as well. Okay. And there we go. So before too long, you should see something pop up in your uh, viewport. Now, first of all, I'll unpreview my mesh. So go back to your mesh input, right click and go to preview, click on preview. Okay. So there's our output. And if you look closely, uh, you can see that something's wrong, right? <clears throat> So if we look at uh, the difference between this module and this module, um, it's giving us some uh, clear, like high radiation values right there. But as soon as it transitions into the next bit of geometry, it's giving us low radiation values. And if we were to flip to the other side of those two modules, you can see it's doing the opposite on the other side. Um, so what that means is, <coughs> um, uh, basically, our ladybug analysis is not working for part of our surface. Um, now, this is because of a thing uh, to do with surfaces and meshes that are of a single thickness, where um, basically they have uh, a direction. So if I were to select one of these meshes and type in DIR in Rhino for direction, and zoom in on that guy, you can see all the arrows are pointing kind of one way, right? So you can see on the, on the side where the arrows are pointing out, we're getting uh, clear radiation values. On the side where they're pointing in or pointing away, uh, we're not really getting any analysis values. Now, if I were to click on this and flip it and then press Enter, it would take a few seconds. But you can see that the, the um, part of the surface that Ladybug is analyzing has changed. So it's analyzing. It's so always analyzing the part of the surface that is facing out, or the direction that's facing out. Um, and there's a simple way to fix this, which would be to just offset our meshes. I could select all the objects on the layer mesh and type in offset mesh. And this should be the same uh, you know, process you went through when you uh, modeled it for 3D printing. You just type in a distance, make sure you uh, check the option for solid, check the option for both sides, and I'm also going to check the option for delete input meshes right now. I don't want to worry about that, and just click offset. Now you can see we have new meshes that are solid, uh, that have a thickness, and what that actually means is that, uh, you know, like the surface facing out here is different from the surface facing out there. 
those are two separate surfaces. And if I look at the direction of them, the whole outside of my mesh is facing out. So Ladybug is going to analyze the front and the back of that geometry. Now I want to select all those meshes, go back into Grasshopper, and I'm going to reset my mesh uh, component. Uh, you can see that it's broken, which is because I deleted the meshes it was originally referencing. Um, and then I'll right click on it and hit Set Multiple Meshes. And again, after a few seconds, uh, we should see the analysis pop up. And I'll, un I'll turn off that layer. OK, great. Uh, and you know, once again, you could go back over here and uh, kind of play with the analysis period. So if I set this only to January, uh, you can see our results would be a lot more different because the sun's coming at a more oblique angle. Uh, you can see the radiation is kind of spreading deeper into the geometry, and the outside edge is getting a lot more uh, radiation. Um, so you can kind of set this analysis period to whatever you want, to a single day, to a whole year, uh, or anything in between, and kind of look at a whole, basically the range of uh, radiation that the geometry would be um, getting over that period of time. Uh, and so just to point this out, again with the legend parameter input, we could change the colors. So we could go down here and copy paste this. And I'll choose something like do this time. And we could look at a whole kind of different, <laughs> you can play with the slider and you know look at all the different types of uh, uh, like um, gradients that uh, Ladybug has. Um, and just like down here, if we took our mesh, In this case, I believe it's the radiation mesh output. And baked that. I could just right click, go bake. If we were to close Grasshopper, you can see our actual geometry uh, will have those colors baked into it. Uh, oops, mesh wires. Okay, and so that's how you would get that information into. Uh, into Rhino and uh, use it for creating uh, your drawings and diagrams and so on. Okay, so I think that should do us uh, for this tutorial.